Welcome to Back Page Blues Part 2. It's time for my favourite part of the week, and that is where we answer your questions. Uh, I'm still joined by Charlie, the Hurricane Skillen from the Mail Online, and thank you so much. So we've got an awful lot of questions, so we should make start and get through as many as possible. Uh, I'll, I'll go first, Raw. Um, Eden Hazard wants to know... Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether that's a really subscriber. Him. Yeah, yeah well, obviously. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's certainly not doing much else, so we might as well be watching Back Page Blues. Um, who do you think is to blame for Chelsea's form, the manager or the players? Well, I uh, think you should have a look in the mirror. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're definitely uh, complicit. Um, I think it's. I don't think it can be. It's just such a fine question. It's, I don't it's not. It's not a yes no question. A, is no, it? it's a very layered question, and there's mm. a lot of uh, factors that need to be taken into consideration. It isn't something where we can say what is to blame for Chelsea's problems. This is the answer because if it, mm -hmm. if there was a definitive answer, it would have been rectified. No, of course. It's a very layered, confusing, complex issue. Mm. Um, of course, the manager is part of that. Of course, the players are part of that. Of course, the board. I imagine mm -hmm. the fans have a part to play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't put my finger on it. Can you offer well, any more insight? I mean, that? Th obviously, this has probably been the biggest topic since the Leicester game. Mourinho came out and said he felt betrayed by the players, which is extraordinary quote, really. Um, you know, he, bad he, he, language. He, yeah, it is. Well, yeah, it's, it, it's a very sort of emotive term, isn't mm. it? You know, he he was explaining how how he tried to drill the team about how Leicester played, and then we got done by two goals. Yeah. That you know that he specifically kind of outlined that they were that well, they were trying to so score. Well. You know, and but I, you know, I do. You know, I, look, I, I'm not saying that Mourinho isn't at fault because, they, you know, if, if you're put in that position, paid that money, then the, you, you're paid to have the buck stop with you. Mm. You know, uh, Mourinho has overseen this slide. But equally, you know, I, I think some of the players' performances have been shameful and their attitude has been shameful. Um, I think that, you know, I do, I do sympathise with... With Mourinho, he's got World Cup winners in that squad. You know, he, he's got he's got he's, you know, every, every single player in the league, every single player in the side won the league mm. last year, um, and you know it, it doesn't matter what formation you play, what you know what, what specific tactics you put yeah, on the team. Yeah, once they cross the white line, it's down to them, isn't it? You know, those players should be should be beating Bournemouth. Strongly agree. Uh, this question is from Bert. Uh, I know Bert. I don't know personally, but I know him as a, as a Twitter friend. He's That's got a lot of insight. He's, yeah, he's got a lot of insight. Yeah, he's my virtual mate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, he really, really uh, speaks a lot of sense. Goes to a lot of football. Good for um, you, Bert. Bert wants to know our thoughts on the new away allocation. I think he's referring to the new ground. Um, and do we think that it should be moved elsewhere? Right, well, unfortunately, I, I think this is a massive, massive shame. Despite there being you know, expanded capacity at the proposed new ground, which is obviously, you know, Chelsea are looking to push planning permissions through and uh, start playing, I think, 2020. Yeah. Um, there's actually going to be less away fans than there are currently. That's a disgrace. I, I, I think it's an outrage. I, I think that's really bad. I think it's poor for atmosphere. It's, it's um, incredibly poor for atmosphere. Every single atmosphere, home atmosphere, the atmosphere of a home support depends. is purely determined, specifically determined by the, the uh, passion on display from the away yeah, fans. Yeah. The, the louder the away fans, the better the home support. No, the the more agree. prominent they are placed in the stadium, the, the better the support. I, I, I completely agree. And unfortunately, I think it's a trend that you do see with these redevelopments. Obviously, we it's went terrible. our first away game in the city that we went to together was Manchester City. Yeah. And I think I think you've got slightly less less fans there than you. And than they do that narrow thing. thing. They, they split you thing. over. Yeah, yeah. It's um, terrible. I, and I, I think the away fans aren't too far from where they are now. It might be a block over. Um, but I, I'd, I'd certainly like to see the shed end full of Chelsea fans. Or so. It's our spiritual home yeah. as well. It's where and we, it's where you know, we belong. I, personally, I, I think that Mourinho, funnily enough, in his first spell, moved the away fans from the east lower. Yes. Um, moved them to shed end. I think that had a dramatic, Massive, massively dramatic, detrimental effect yeah. to the atmosphere. And the interesting thing is, Mourinho, mm. that was on Mourinho's orders. Yes. So he comes out and says, "I want the away fans moved," mm -hmm. which obviously will have a, have an impact on the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. He then complains about the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Like you can't have it both ways. You can't yeah. move the away support no. to sanitise the ground and then complain that the ground is sanitised. No, 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 I completely agree. If anyone doesn't know what we're on about, by the way, the East Stand is, is right in the corner of Chelsea's kind of most vocal fans on the Matthew Harding line, but, of which this boy is the sort of... Not leader. him, he's in the posh seat. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not quite. But uh, yeah, and Mourinho moved that uh, about 10 years ago and it, you know, it, most Chelsea fans think it had a real kind of decline on the atmosphere. So, yeah, no, I, I, I think it's a bad thing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, bad. Next one from Kareem. Uh, which loanee um, the Chelsea currently have out on loan would make a difference to the team if we brought him back in January? <sighs> There's a fair few to choose from. They're yeah. all doing very well. Uh, I think I'd probably have to go with Christensen. Someone at the back, someone to shore it up. We haven't looked great at the back, have um, we? Yeah, I mean, Christensen, I think the, the, the week that we played Maccabi Tel Aviv, 
he actually won the player of the match day for Champions League. So all the time oh, really? in the Champions League group stage for Borussia Mönchengladbach, Gladbach, he won the you know player won, the, of the, won, the, won the player of the player of the round. You know, he, he's been at the heart of a very very good defence. Um, obviously, they've done one in the Champions League this season. He's a very very talented player. We saw him at uh, what Shrewsbury yes, last season. Yeah. Um, you know, would like to see him get more chances. Yeah. I think he he's certainly the one that's impressed the most. Um, Dom Solanke has been uh, he did very well playing as well. very well for in, Vitesse. Yeah, yeah. So is Izzy Brown, so is Lewis Baker, every, you know, those uh, three English lads that went to Vitesse have all done well. Chaloba, obviously, we saw. Yeah, he scored a great goal for, for Napoli. For Napoli yeah. Did you see that goal? Yeah, the incredible. first touch. Incredible. First touch, you know, incredible. Um, unfortunately, that, you know, that was only his third third actual appearance for Napoli, but hopefully he'll right. get more. Yeah, hard but to drop I'd, him when he's doing things yeah, like that. I, I think Christensen's a, a very, very fair shout. Cheers. Um, right, <laughs> Chris <laughs> Curley uh, has asked, uh, how strongly do we feel that the players should thank the fans for travelling? Immensely. Uh, mentally, you do, know, you know, do you know what, Chris? I, I, that was that was the worst thing, about, almost the worst thing anyway, about that Leicester game. It, it just completely compounded that terrible, terrible performance. And it, it was, you know, they were gone. Was, the players were gone. Me, me and the me and the boy <laughs> Raw here travelled on the way back, and we we couldn't stop talking Can, about it. It was yeah, it was, it was a travesty. And do you know what? It, it was a glimpse into what the world would be like without John Terry. John Terry wasn't on the pitch yeah. for the final minutes of the game before the before uh, the ref blew the whistle. Therefore, the second that he blew the whistle, the players hopped it down the tunnel. It was outrageous. I if Terry was on the pitch, mm. he would bark at them and get them over. Yeah, to I mean, anyway. he shouldn't have to bark at them. No, but know, I, know, I know he shouldn't have to, but, but he did. You know, it, it is honestly. But they deserve mentioning, actually. It was uh, Thibaut Courtois, yeah. Branislav Ivanovic, and Cesar Aspilicueta. That's, yeah, that, that's they were the only led, three. Led, led by Ivanovic. Led by said. Ivanovic. Ivanovic was the said. driving force to come you know, over, yeah. But, you know, as soon as the final whistle went, they, you know. Let's Cross the fabric is Let, gone. Oh, completely down gone. the tunnel as fast yeah. as I saw him move all games. Yeah. Goodness, um, you know it, it can't be. I know a lot of you guys are watching on TV, and that, 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 that's that's absolutely fair enough. Not everyone can get tickets, but you know that's a Monday night. People took days off work. People travelled up. Getting there. home about two get, o'clock in the get, morning, going there, back to work the next day at night. There, there was no trains. I had like four hours sleep or something stupid. Yeah. You know, it is it is ridiculous that, and that they can't come and show their appreciation. We don't ask a lot. It, it's, 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 it's literally that, yeah. isn't it? No, it, 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 that's it, all we're asking. It, yeah, and it was good atmosphere out there. I, yeah. you know, I, I, oh, I genuinely we think, we think Chelsea supporters got behind the team when, frankly, you know, <laughs> yeah, we were, there was nothing on the pitch to show that. And I, I honestly think it's really systematic of how. A, a portion of those players feel towards the club at the yeah. moment. And I, th I think it's disgraceful. Yeah, I agree. Um, next one from Scott. He says, if we still had um, Kevin De Bruyne, Romelu Lukaku and Ryan Bertrand, would our team be better than it is now? <laughs> well, assuming that they were the player that they are now, because yeah. if if, obviously they, they've developed since we last saw them. Yeah. Then, you know, the last time I saw... Romelu Lukaku playing a Chelsea shirt, he, I wasn't sad to see him go. No. Equally, Kevin De Bruyne, I remember I went to Swindon. Yeah. I went to Swindon in the League Cup. It was Lovely a game where Marco Van Ginkel, yes, <laughs> produces a wonderful person. Yeah, um, that's right. It was in the, Billy Piper. I'm of course referring <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. um, to. It was in the uh, it was in the in the League Cup, Swindon, and it was a game where Marco Van Ginkel broke his yeah broke, broke his, his broke his leg yeah. for the second time. And Kevin De Bruyne played in that game and was dreadful. Like, yeah, you know, he, I've, he, I've, he I completely terrible, take my hat off to him. Terrible. I think he's a fantastic player. He's looked, he's looked excellent. He's looked flawless at times. Yes, but yeah. the last time we, you know, we were offered an awful lot of money for a player who was completely marshaled out of the game by the Swindon defence. Yeah, and and similar with Lukaku, you know, were offered a huge amount of money by Everton uh, for, for a player at that time that the, the, the wasn't even nearly first choice. Yeah, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? You know, at at you're right at that time, those two players specifically. Those deals were right for Chelsea, and you know I, I remember a feature the, the the mail ran saying you know you know didn't Chelsea do well to get that money yeah, for, those, yeah, yeah. for those players? You know obviously De Bruyne prospered at uh, <coughs> Wolfsburg be, being the focal point of the yeah. team. You know that, that Lukaku, was going to happen. Lukaku at Chelsea. scored 50, 50 goals in hundred games recently. He, he he did you know and, and that's fantastic and you know it it does make you wonder. But at the time Chelsea are would have been mad to not take that money. At, yeah, challenging on every front. Yeah, and we we. We, you know what was happening. Was we working. also went on to win the league without. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so. You know, w one thing I will say, I think letting Ryan Bertram go was was a very very stupid decision. Very stupid. Um, Singing Ryan the Lion from Bayern to Bob Marley is one of my favourite <laughs> pastimes. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you know, I think getting rid of him, 
you know, Philip Luis obviously obviously never worked out. He never settled. Frank, you know, I, I'm, Bertrand I'm would be in the team now, wouldn't he? Bertrand would certainly be in the team now. Yeah. He's, he, he's probably going to be in, he's probably going to be England's starting left back in the Euros. Yeah, yeah. And he's one of the best left backs in the Premier League. Yeah. And I, I, I do think it was very very poor to let him go. Agreed. A uh, question from Julian. Uh, Julian is asking Fulham Football Club. Do you consider them a friendly neighbour or a rival? Friendly neighbour, of course. Um, you know, there, there, there was a time, obviously, you know, probably was a time before we were born, but more recently when, when you remember, they beat us 1-0 and everyone went... They, Didn't William Gallas get sent off? Yeah. He went, they, William they Gallas went, went mental at Craven Cottage. Well, let's say this. Fulham consider us a rival. Yeah, oh, uh, they hate us. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not fans. Everyone of us hates us, yeah. yeah. Um, In that but, part of the world. But, uh, but no, no, I... I, I more than the club, I love Craven Cottage. It's Craven beautiful. Cottage is, is one of the best grounds it's in England. It's the oldest stadium in London. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Stadium. You know, and, it, and it's got it's got a beautiful little cottage, funny enough. And it, it's it, got it, a fantastic it, away end. We always really have a really good yeah, support. Yeah, yeah. And it's a beautiful part of London. Yeah, it's, 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 it's South West London. And, and it, you go for a drink down, you can have a lovely a lovely pint down the river yeah. and then stroll through, stroll through the cemetery into yeah. the uh, football stadium. It's good, it's really yeah. nice. And, and if I could choose where Chelsea were going to play when the new stadium's built, it'd be Craven Cottage. Unfortunately, that's perfect not catching happen. But yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree with every word. I don't see them as a rival at all. In fact, when they got to the you, what was it, the Europa Cup final, Europa whatever it was called, yeah. then I wanted them to win. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, um, I think that's all we've got time for. Um, so I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap it up there. But thank you so much for getting your questions in. They're really interesting questions, and they're sorry we couldn't get through more. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, why not click the subscribe button? And uh, we'll see you all very soon. Only blaze. Welcome to the Chelsea Fans Channel. This lady here is my nana, and some of you could be in big trouble. The other day after the Bournemouth result, I did a video at home, it was a video on the pink sofa, and I felt like I raised some valid points, points that we could have discussed. 